this is Jighead TV and today again we are speaking about fishing and our main fishing today is rock fishing and uh, we're gonna concentrate more on species this season so today I want to talk about mainly grouper and uh, any type of rock fish which is uh, close in uh, play and attacking type to grouper which is, uh, could be a mangrove jack or uh, bigger snappers or emperors but the mainly the main target is grouper as you know grouper is a fish that lives near the rocks and most of the time it stays inside the rock and only you know when it needs to feed it comes out or waits for a prey inside the rock comes out takes a bite and then goes back again to the rock so this makes fishing difficult because of the rocks because of the you know getting snacked especially when you're fishing with a metal jig which is also a very effective tool effective method for uh, fishing for grouper but apart from metal jigs there is different type of uh, lures which we can uh, use for uh, catching grouper the weather is uh, when I you know like waited and I wanted to film this the weather became like this so I don't know if we are going to be trying to, uh, catching today anything but at least the main thing is for us is to understand the concept of how to catch look for a grouper and the most important after you catch it how to retrieve that uh, guy which always tries to hide in, inside the stone and there is a chance big chance if you are waiting patiently to catch the fish even if it's gone into under the rocks but uh, here is the we have like a 50 50 situation but patience win wins on this moment so you will have to just wait patiently and use different approaches to make the fish come out so basically let's talk about the, what kind of lures I mostly use for example that that's my personal but uh, this is what I mostly use for uh, catching grouper and of course number one priority for me is the soft baits uh, because soft baits especially when I play near the rocks is uh, they have a very realistic play at the same time they have uh, you know like when you use lighter weights they are falling down with a very realistic movement and it gives a chance for you know like sometimes you know uh, grouper attacks on the fall so you just start retrieving and just stop for a while give it like a two second three second fall and grouper will attack or even uh, especially for the shads shads are the the paddle tails uh, the soft baits with the paddle tails are the most effective when you're playing near the rocks because uh, they play like a fish exactly or the other very important part of uh, grouper fishing because they are uh, very huge fans of crab crabs and other crustaceans so anything that looks like a crab a crow or shrimp is uh, very popular among them different colors i mean the color preference you know i always get asked about questions what color to choose and i will tell you first of all your color is here it's your mentality because you know sometimes you could be using some color but you don't personally believe in it and it will not work because you're gonna just keep stop fishing with that and the second of course there is a specific chart you know like uh, you can uh, google them online you know just uh, what color to use in what kind of water marky water of course i'm gonna be using something like pink or some lighter colors which will go into contrast and the very clear water i will use something like this darker darker colors so it doesn't look too much uh, weird for fish and it looks like normal uh, crustacean you know after that uh, when you're fishing for grouper uh, specifically in a you know when you came fishing in the morning or you came in the evening and uh, usually good time for grouper fishing with lures when you're going to fish with lures and uh, when it goes to the jerk baits any types of jerk baits uh, they are very popular among hamur uh, grouper so you can use jerk baits uh, very slow retrieves uh, uh, among the rocks and your cast will be 
you are not casting to the deep you are casting along the shoreline so just uh, because you know the fish is sitting the groupers are sitting in the rocks so there is no point of casting too far uh, the most important is to cover the more area uh, of the breakwater for example and you will be casting among the shoreline so jerk baits work well on uh, sunrise on uh, sunset you know like uh, when the sun uh, is still light and it's getting a bit darker different colors of jerk baits of according to the preference of the fish at, the, 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 at that moment and believe me you know like uh, size doesn't matter that much you know i've got uh, big hamurs on a small 60 millimeter lures and i've got big lures you know like 120 140 millimeters and i've got hamurs the, the same size of the lure so hamur is a very greedy fish even if it's full if its stomach is full if it has a chance to bite and you played your lure properly it will bite for sure and the other most you know very effective method especially on a like uh, very sharp breakwaters when you have a depth for example you will see a breakwater and the uh, depths will go drastically down so very popular is the cranks different types of cranks for example uh, i like orange color and white color because uh, they look like a crow or crab or something like that which uh, is in favorite favorite dish by grouper so the cranks are usually played very slowly because they go deep by themselves for example this crank with this lip will go up to two meters 1.8 meters depending on how you're gonna put your rod tip and uh, you know you play it slowly because uh, when you play it it's go it goes deep and the first thing is gonna hit with so it's gonna hit the rock with the, with its lip so if you go too fast then you have a chance to get snagged on the rocks so once you feel some kind of a hit on the rock uh, with the lip of the crank you just leave it and it's gonna float a bit then you're gonna retrieve it again so your basic method will be you will just for example cast you start making it dive as much as possible and then you start slowly retrieve it um, all the way among the rocks once you feel the hit on the stone just leave it don't push it because if you push it it will catch the rock don't push it it will just float and then again float again you know so you're gonna play it's like by uh, like a stairs but uh, have a very chance of catching uh, even uh, you know like very hidden groupers and the play is especially it has uh, some kind of uh, sound you know they come with the rattles they, some of them come with silence some colors attracts them so cranks are very essential uh, part of uh, grouper fishing too and of course uh, as again mentioned and we mentioned that is the soft baits different types of soft baits there is no specific but uh, if i'm fishing for grouper i will give more priorities to paddle tails because i'm gonna be retrieving them among the rocks with a very light weight for example depending on the depth of that place of course and uh, starting from two gram and going up to maximum 12 gram also depending on the situation and the, for example current situation is uh, it's a very wavy so i might use eight gram just to try but the the water is very murky so the possibility of catching hamur is very low because uh, you know the sand is up and you know the fish doesn't like when the sand goes into its gills so most of them either they will hide a bit deeper into the stones or they will go just uh, wait for the storm to finish somewhere in the deep but anyway so these are the essential part when it comes to the rod uh, so basically what you will need uh, the rock fishing by itself doesn't require you like specifically for grouper doesn't require you to cast very far because your main casting uh, you know your main uh, Thing is your rod line and your legs so you're gonna be moving along the breakwater to understand if the fish is around <clears throat> so once you found the fish or for example uh, before you found the fish you're gonna you're gonna need to choose your gear so 
the minimum I, will, I would start with a 2500 reel and approximately 0.8 0.6 is a bit uh, light for a grouper specifically it's not about the fish it's about the play in the rocks so it has a power so you don't have and uh, when you're playing in the rocks you have to close the drag as much as possible and 0.6 doesn't give you that much chance so I would suggest starting with 0.8 PE and up to 1 1.2 is more than enough you can use 1.5 but of course your uh, <coughs> sensitivity will be less for the rod the maximum you're gonna use is uh, up to 21 gram because you are not casting far you are casting very close the, I'm using for example this rod is 6 to 21 is just because some of the lures are around 19 gram like jerk baits so to cast them I would use this but when I'm using with a fish soft bait you know and or the crank they are mostly around the 8 12 gram in the average so and it goes less lesser than that <clears throat> and you would need a longer leader so one meter it's a minimum because grouper goes very deep into the rocks and uh, you will need to sometimes give up for it to retrieve so you will need to give up so it will move a lot so your mine for example goes up to 1.5 meters 1.6 meters and uh, the most important thing is uh, the leader you would need approximately starting from 15 lb because 15 lb is the you know from the experience is the the start for a grouper anything less than that will get damaged much more easier so you will start with 15 lb leader uh, start with a two 2500 and up to 4000 that's your personal preference uh, for the reel and the rod you don't require that much long rod you can uh, start from 2.3 2.2 up to 2.5 5.4 meters anything longer than that is uh, not very helpful on doing rock fishing because you're gonna be trying to get the fish out and you need a uh, just to keep it tight and the longer rod especially on retrieving the fish you know are trying to catch the fish it will give you some difficulties if you get snagged for example you get a, into the stone so first of all try to get your uh, soft bait you know don't push it hard just try to shoot it out you do like this and you release the line do like this and then release the line do like this and then release the line it will help somehow to shoot out the soft bait if it doesn't work then what I suggest to do is just pull it you know don't put it hard just pull it moderately so it will help for you to release to open the hook see it's released now and the soft bait is out the hook opened up which is not a big problem because I just take pliers I will, I will take pliers and just put the hook back into its place This will not affect anyway if I catch the fish it will be it will keep working the main thing is as I told you so the hook is like this it's catching the stone for example and if you start pushing it hard it will just uh, you know like you can cut the line the main thing is first you try to shoot it out so once you start shooting it out as I told you the way is you keep the tension you pull your line and release it pull your line and release it you pull your line like this and release it which will give in um, <coughs> have 40 percent chance of getting the jig head out or the any hook to get out 
If it gets stuck more than that, then you will do, you for example, close the line, the, you know, the drag, everything with your hand, and you just push, you know, along the, along the blank of your rod. So you just gently push. You, you, you start putting some power, you know, once you start feeling the hook, you start putting gently, putting some power. And as I saw it in the video, right now I retrieve that. And the only thing is that hook op opened up, but I do it, I know that it will open up. And I'll, I can still catch fish on this. I just use the pliers to put the hook back and then cast again and try to catch the fish. So that's the one way of fishing in the rocks. But for example, if you are using hooks, which are mostly used for, for trivali, queen fish, you know, the harder hooks, <coughs> the chances of getting it out are less. Because of the hooks being very hard. Retrieve it very slowly. Hamur doesn't like fast retrieves. Groupers, they like slow retrieves. <coughs> and uh, this slow retrieves, uh, it gives the chance, you know, for Hamur to get out of the rock and catch it. And then if you do it very fast, Hamur is just going to look for the stone and just something fast. And that's not interesting. You know, when it's something plays next to it slowly, slowly, then you have a big chance of Hamur getting out and biting it. So Hamur requires slow retrieves, soft plays, and uh, when retrieving it requires patience. So let's talk uh, about uh, retrieving Hamur once you caught it. So main thing when uh, you're, you're retrieving your Hamur, uh, your grouper, let's say uh, in Arabic grouper called Hamur for our English listeners. So get used to it now to the name of Hamur. We are all used to the name of Hamur. So your drag is, uh, for example, if for a kingfish, you would lose, you would use a lighter drag. So to give a chance for a kingfish to get tired quickly on the first couple of runs. When it comes to Hamur, for, to grouper, you would require a bit tighter uh, drag. Uh, and this, you know, you can do it scientifically, of course, at home, but you never know what kind of fish you're gonna catch, what size of fish you're gonna catch. So the drag is, should be the way it gets out, but it gets out very tight. So you, so you have a chance, if you do some small movement, it will start opening up a little bit more. And if you do, you can, you know, it should be on the edge, on the moderate edge of uh, drag. Because when a Hamur uh, grouper bites it, it will start going into the rocks. It's very, if you have a, you know, strong gear and like, line 1.5 p and everything but uh, like uh, then you ha can uh, close the drag much more higher you know like stronger but when you have a lighter gear and lighter gear is used for the sensitivity of the rod so you can feel it among the rocks and you can play with very with very light lures that's why you know like i mean if you're using 1.5 you will not feel it so that's why you would use mostly 1, 0 0.8, 1.2 max PE. And in this case, you know, you would need to give a chance for Hamur to hide. But uh, if Hamur hides inside the rock, it's not a big problem. So for you, after that, the main thing is to patiently wait and not uh, give a chance for a grouper to get more deeper into the rock. To do that, you're gonna keep your line tight so Hamur is under the rock but it doesn't have cha more chances to move then you will start very easy procedure I mean never pull the line because pulling the line never helps you know if for example grouper is sitting on your lure and you start pulling the line and it went inside the rock with the, its head mouth closed so it's you pulling the line it starts pulling more you're pulling the line it starts pulling more so it doesn't work and then essentially it will pull more than the leader line, for example, or, or it will just snap leader line because leader line has its own capability. For example, if you 
play it on the rock like three, four times, it will snap anyway. So that's why don't let grouper push more. So that's why don't push your uh, rod. What you do, I'm sure uh, all of us, you know, played when we were kids, you know, the phone with the cups, with the, um, you know, normal uh, lion, you know, lion or the, you would take the sewing, uh, what is it? Uh, sewing line from uh, your grandmother and you put it on the two cups, two paper cups and you can uh, speak between different rooms because the sound passes through the line. So use that right now in fishing. How do you use that? For example, once you have a grouper hidden inside the rock, what you do, you start hitting your rod, your blank. You start hitting it. Hitting the blank you know, makes some kind of vibration and sound with, which uh, I've noticed makes grouper very nervous. You know, it makes it nervous even more than you are pulling because when you are pulling, it knows that it's winning and it has more advantages. But when you, st when you are not pulling but start hitting like this, first of all, there is a vibration sound which is, uh, and there is a hook inside the mouth. So they start moving and there is a, some kind of uh, sound comes out you know some uh, probably sonar sound some vibration comes and it makes grouper nervous so what grouper thinks i think like in my opinion he thinks that the, this rock is not good to hide so he tries to find another rock and to find another rock it's gonna just try to move out and in so here you have a good chance to push it more you know so you hit a couple of times and you will feel it start moving then keep a couple of times and when it finishes you feel that it's getting out you start moving it out and if it hides for example a second time in the rock again you play with this or the next step if this doesn't work is to give it a chance to understand that you release the hammer so you put your rod tip a bit down and you wait you know like uh, you feel the very soft uh, you know you give a slack on the line so Hamur feels that uh, there is no tension and I can catch Hamur, uh, I can leave now. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna just try to again run away and hide again inside the other rock. So you have a chance, start retrieving it. Close your drag to the maximum, not to the maximum, but with like make it tight. And then uh, just wait for it and it will come out essentially. And when you start getting it closer, and you know it went out of the rocks and it's already you know like how grouper gets tired because he has the pressure of staying all the time under the rock and moving against the your pool so it loses its uh, power of course and when you start retrieving it uh, keep your drag more tighter so don't give it a chance to hide third time because the usually when it hides third time closer to the shore uh, that's very dangerous because uh, the rocks are getting more sharper there and you know it can hide inside the rock some rock and uh, just cut your leader line and that's why when it's already start coming out just keep it tight don't push it too much but always keep it tight and bring it to the shore once it's in the shore you just use the lip grip or you can uh, take it from the from the gills and take the grouper out and of course this is like very essential parts of uh, fishing uh, for grouper I hope this is help you somehow to understand the concept of uh, grouper fishing in the rocks and how to retrieve grouper because uh, grouper is very interesting fish to catch and especially it's uh, more very satisfying when you get it out of course don't forget to release uh, groupers less than a uh, size of uh, regulated by the government i think in uh, uae it's around 50 centimeters 45 50 centimeters so anything smaller than that be kind release it back to the water so you can enjoy it more and if you caught lucky and caught something bigger than that so you know, the best, of course, you know, because the hamur is endangered species. And uh, just release it for everyone to enjoy grouper fishing. 
If you didn't release it, that's your choice, of course, but at the same time, don't try to overkill fish. I know some people, they like to catch more than five, six pieces and keep them in the freezer. That's, I mean, if you enjoy fishing, I mean, our fishing is about sport fishing, about enjoying. And if you want to eat fish, you can any time buy it in the supermarket. Of course, I understand the hunter instinct, but still it's uh, Hamur is endangered species but very fun to catch and it's uh, very rewarding when you catch it nice picture with a nice grouper and uh, releasing it is gives you more satisfaction because you first of all you found it then you caught it then you retrieved it then you release the fish and both satisfied as an angler and the fish that is back into the wild thanks again for watching i hope this helps and uh, if you want uh, to see more videos of course just subscribe to the channel if you, you can uh, put the uh, ring the bell you know if you want to be notified about our upcoming videos i will try to film my, uh, make the videos more and more uh, if you have any questions you can send it in the comments or uh, just uh, send this as a message in uh, on jighead.ie and uh, we will we are ready to help and uh, ready to help you and make new videos on uh, different kind of topics so any questions welcome for that and thanks again for watching thank you very much